Hello everyone, Code Theorem here, and we're going to continue working on our Roblox minigames in this episode. This will be the first episode as Code Theorem and, um, not Bballer13SN. Alright, so, so far what we have in this game is we have a game that allows us, um, to cycle through loops and do a game loop, but never actually play a game. Well, this is, this is terrible, to be honest. We need to fix this and move along, get further along, and actually make this worthwhile. Alright, so we're going to go to our server script service and go to our minigame control script. Once again, I'd just like to um, tell you guys this. Alright, right now we have... Um, a while true do loop this is what actually starts everything off is right here while true do okay so it loops itself once a second and if there's not a mini game running um, it starts a game now the game starting only works if there's more than one person in the game at the time that means if there's no people or if there's just one person sorry you've got to wait we're mo waiting until we have at least two, otherwise it's not a game, and you're competing against nobody. That's not fun. So then we select the minigame, um, which currently is just return from our list up here, a random game. Any of the games in our list. From there, we tell people, hey, this minigame's been chosen, get yourself ready. We wait 10 seconds and then destroy that message. We then go to minigame running and change its value to true because, hey, there's a minigame running now. You need to know that. We then go to game that server storage. We find the event uh, to start the minigame rolling and we fire it. We don't have to feed anything in to the event, at least not yet. All right. We might end up feeding in, say, the map later on. But for right now, we're not doing that. So we're going to continue into our default minigame, which when its event is fired, it catches it and it handles it with this function. All right. Now in this function, what it's doing is it's getting all the players and it's getting the map, which currently is just game.workspace. Okay? The reason we're not sending a real map in yet is because we haven't made a real map yet. All right. We're going to do that next episode. You guys didn't vote in time on the last episode, so I just went ahead and made my own decision, and I decided we're going to make a mini game that actually runs first. It's then spawning the players, waiting 20 seconds, and then saying, "Okay, game's over. We're done. Have a nice one." All right. Now that's not the funnest mini game ever, is it? No, it's it's really not. So how do we make this mini game more fun? Huh? Well, we could give them an objective like go and kill everybody else. That would work. Um, try to get however many points you possibly can. That would work. But what's the best way of doing this? What what can we do better than anything? What can we well, we could make a simple mini game um, of just kill everybody, and in fact, that's what we're going to do. The reason we're going to do this is because practically every mini game you'll think of will involve people dying. Oh no, we can't do that. Yes, we can. They're not real people. They're just Roblox characters. So we're going to make it to where everybody just pushes forward and tries to kill everybody else by getting the most points possible um, and we'll make these points in a second they're going to be specific to this mini game okay because not e when you make a mini game place it's different than say sword fighting tournament or paintball in those games you are fighting and they're all kind of following the same idea they're all f games where you go out and you fight people and you kill them with either a sword or a paintball gun However, mini games are different. Mini games are a type of game where you 
don't really have any specific agenda. You just are trying to get wins, points, spend those points, and have a good time. There's no set idea as to what the game is about. It's just about having fun, and that means it can have any little stupid game in it possible, imaginable. As long as it's fun, it's okay. You can play it, and everybody will accept it into the minigame world. Okay? So, having that said, we're going to continue pushing forward and we're going to make a simple mini game right now where it's just who can kill the most people. Alright? It's not the greatest mini game in the world, I'll admit, and it's pretty darn generic. But I'm not here to teach you guys, hey, here's an original idea. I'm here to teach you guys, here's how you can make your original idea. Here's how you can continue forward and make what you want to make easily and know how to do it correctly. Alright? So, we're going to go through all the players here. If the character doesn't equal nil, then, alright, continue. We're also going to make player.characteradded connect function. Oops. Function char. End. All right. Now here's one thing I want to tell you guys right now before we run into this error. Here's the thing about connections. When you connect a handler to an event, it's stuck to that event. All right. And say we ran this mini game again. Right now, every time we go through a player, we're adding this character added handler. Well, it, say the game ran like three times and there were still people there from the last time it was played. Well now, whenever their character is added, this thing is going to fire three times. Three. Three times. We only want it to fire once. If it fires three times, we could have a real problem. So how do we keep that from happening? Could we check if we've already connected an event to that player's character? Yes, and by the way, um, you could do that, but the problem with that is it's very difficult to keep track of everything without a complex system. There's a much easier way, actually. The much easier way is just, at the end of the minigame, disconnect all of these handlers from the events. Yes, you can disconnect them. You can erase the connection and basically throw away your handler. It's useless at that point, right? So why keep it? Why make life harder for yourself? There's no reason. So we're going to continue on and what we're going to do is we're going to make an array up here or a table, sorry, called connections, all right? And connections is just going to be an empty table. So now how do we add this event to our connections table and then what do we do from there? What we do for, to add it is we do connections and yes by the way handlers connections connect when you do this connecting it returns the connection okay it returns the event connection and that event connection just holds the handler as a variable so when that connection finds out that the event has been fired, it uses its handler, okay? But the connection is what you're really getting back. So we'll do connections, and then we don't have to specify the length of this table. We don't have to use this table and specify which each index is right up here. We can specify it down here. So we can do the number of connections already in the table and add one and that way we're at the very end of the table and making a new index in the table to uh, put this into. Alright, we're just doing that. Now we've got the connection stored in a variable, really easy, and we're going to make a new function here. Function game over, okay? End. And we're just going to quickly write this function function or um for i equals one number connections do you guys should know what a for loop is by now um hopefully you do if not comment below i'll help you guys out somehow some way 
um, there is videos on it. I have videos. If you just want to go to my channel and search up for loop, feel free to do that. Anyway, we're going to continue. Connections. Oops. Connections. I. E uh, and all you do is disconnect. All right. Just disconnect it all together. Disconnect everything. All right. We're going through every single one here. Going through a for loop for every single connection, and we're disconnecting it, which means we're throwing away the handler. We're taking ourselves, uh, taking the connection out of that event. We're done with it. And now at the very end, we're just going to set connections equal to a new empty table. We've disconnected everything. Now let's start from scratch. Anyway, down here in the uh, character added event, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create another function called function spawn player play, uh, character. And actually, yeah, I'll do spawn character char. And, alright, so instead of doing it the way we have it right now, and actually we can keep this right here, but we're just going to do spawn character char. Okay, nothing insanely crazy just yet. We're going to do uh, here. We're just going to take this, copy it right here, change player dot character to char or chur or cur, however you want to pronounce that uh, abbreviation I have there, and then map dot spawn points get children. And you know what? We're going to make this into a variable. Spawn points. There we go. Copy spawn points. And we're going to do math.random to choose a random spawn point. Math.random, one, and the number of spawn points. So, what this is doing is it's moving the character. It gets all the spawn points. We already have all the spawn points in a variable. And then we're going math.random. And okay, this is indexing, alright? Indexes for models and stuff in Roblox, they have a string index and they have an int index. The int index is the number of the child when you look over here at Explorer. So default mini game would be have index one and default mini game as its string index. It would also and leaderboard givenness would be two, mini game control script would be three, and so forth. It would continue on in that pattern. So when we do this, math.random, one is the lowest index there can possibly be and the number of things in the um, in the table in the children of it that's the maximum index so we're going from anywhere from one to the number of spawn points that's how big of an of a selection we're giving math that random and then we're going to spawn them to that position that's all we're doing right now now we're going to also be giving these people swords here in a minute, um, but we're going to do that not exactly just yet, we're going to do it later on. Um, but one other thing I'd like to do, and we're going to actually change this to spawn, a spawn character, player.character, because I don't really mind if everybody is at, if there's two people sharing a spawn right now, we can always do that and make it smarter later right now we're just going to spawn their character because I'd like to keep everything in one tiny function because this is where we're going to add their uh, kills their leader stat kills and we're also going to add their sword okay so stats or actually they should already have leader stats um, correct let's go to the leaderboard yeah they already have stats okay so Stats equals, and we're going to pass in a player rather than a character. So, player dot character. All right. So let's go down here. Pass in game dot. Now the thing about player is that variable is going to change, and the the char here is also going to change, but it's going to change to the correct thing. So we're going to do game dot players get player from character char to pass in the player. We can't just use this player variable because then it's always going to be the last player that we went through in this list. Okay? 
and now we're just going to pass in player rather than player.character. Stats equals player.leader stats. Alright. And now we're going to make kills equals instance.new int value uh, stats. Just put it directly in the stats. Kills.name. Oops. Oh, here's one thing. If stats find first child kills then and we actually want to do if not meaning if their leader stats does not already have a value named kills then we need to add it in kills that name equals kills and kills that value equals zero all right that's all we're doing for now is adding their kills we'll add in their swords next episode and then the episode after that we're going to give them their or make a map all right I know I said earlier in this video it would be next episode we made a map, but we're not going to do that yet. This episode's been like forever long, and I've still got about 15 minutes worth of teaching and tutorializing to do. So, thank you guys for watching. Next episode, we're going to add the character, or we're going to add the sword to the character. We're going to keep track of when they kill people and give them their kills, and then we're going to decide on the winner in this mini game. Hopefully, we can fit that all into one episode, maybe two. We'll find out as time goes on. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This has been Code Theorem Roblox giving you another tutorial on how to make a mini game in Roblox, and I will catch you guys later. Oh,